So what do a man, a lion, an ox and an eagle have in common? Before we answer this, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of our videos. Okay, so what do a man, a lion, an ox and an eagle have in common? They are all symbols for the four evangelists. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. The evangelists wrote the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Their testimonies bear witness to the life and works of Jesus. It is from these gospels that we learn about Jesus' childhood, his miracles, his ministry and his passion, death and resurrection. We learn how he interacted with his closest followers, the disciples and prepared them to go out and make disciples of all nations. So if they are all talking about basically the same thing, what's the difference between them? How how did the evangelists get these symbols and what do they mean? To answer this, let's look at the writings of some early church fathers. Now, after Jesus' death, there were a lot of versions of his life that were written. However, only the four gospels were recognized by the church as canonical. While all four gospel narratives cover Jesus' life and ministry, they all have some major differences in style, approach and target audience. The earliest church fathers commonly compared the four gospel accounts to the four living creatures who surrounded God's throne in Revelation chapter 4 verse 7 to 8. Saint Irenaeus in his book Against Heresies compares these four living creatures to gospel writers. He also included the explanation in a letter to Pope Damascus in 383 AD. Saint Irenaeus was defending the belief that there were only four gospels that were inspired writings against other so-called gospels like the gospels of Thomas and Philip which were circulating at around the same time. He explains how each of the living creatures relate to Christ. Christ. However, the traditional symbols we see today are more closely related to the creatures found in Ezekiel's vision. Ezekiel describes them like this. And from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the form of men, but each had four faces and each of them had four wings. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man in front, the four had the face of a lion on the right side, the four had the face of an ox on the left side, and the four had the face of an eagle at the back. So how did these symbols relate to the four evangelists and what do they actually mean? The first detailed explanation for these symbols come from the writings of St. Augustine. In his book The Harmony of the Gospels, in chapter 6, he connects each gospel to different aspects of Jesus' divinity and nature. He first compares the gospel of Matthew to the lion, the king of the beasts. He chooses this because Matthew's gospel speaks about Christ's royal descent from King David and tells us that the Magi called him the king of the Jews. For the Gospel of Luke, he chooses a calf for its connection with the priesthood. Luke's Gospel opens with the story of the priest Zechariah and also touches upon priestly activities like the purification rituals when Jesus is presented in the temple. Mark's Gospel cuts straight to Jesus' ministry and his life on earth as a man. So he connects the Gospel of Mark to a man. Finally, since John's Gospel focuses on the divinity of Christ and reflects on the heavenly kingdom of God, he compares this to an eagle. While these explanations do make sense, it is St. Jerome's writings that lay the foundation for how the current symbols came to be associated with each evangelist. So traditionally, the four evangelists are represented as a divine man for Matthew, a winged lion for Mark, a winged ox for Luke, a rising eagle for John. In his commentary on the book of Matthew, St. Jerome writes, The book of Ezekiel also proves that these four gospels had been predicted much earlier. Its first vision is described as follows, and in the myths, there was a likeness of four animals. Their countenances were the face of a man and the face of a lion and the face of a calf and the face of an eagle. He connects each symbol with the way each gospel narrative begins. He writes, The first face of a man signifies Matthew, who began his narrative as though about a man, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. The second face signifies Mark, in whom the voice of a lion roaring in the wilderness is heard. A voice of one shouting in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. The third is the face of the calf which prefigures that the evangelist Luke began with Zechariah the priest. The fourth face signifies John the evangelist who having taken up eagle's wings and hastening toward higher matters, discusses the word of God. These symbols have been passed on through Christian art and tradition. They serve as a visual reminder of the unique themes and perspectives found in each gospel account and how they highlight different facets of Jesus' divinity, his life and his mission.
So, what do you think? Have you seen the Gospels represented in a different way? What other Catholic traditions would you like to know about? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, let us know by liking and subscribing to our channel. It helps us a lot. Until next time.